One of the rules based non discriminatory, open, fair, inclusive, equitable, and transparent multilateral trading system. We are aware of the debilitating impacts of corruption on global prosperity and national progress. Process of corruption and illicit financial flows constitute a huge chunk of resources needed for sustainable development. The recovery and return of such funds to states of origin is a fundamental principle of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Therefore, the international community must promote practical measures to strengthen international cooperation to recover and return stolen assets and to eradicate safe havens that facilitate illicit flows of funds from developing countries to the developed economies. There is also the urgent need to promote peer and inclusive tax regimes in the world. Nigeria helped introduce the resolution on promotion of inclusive and effective international tax cooperation at the UN. We acknowledge the progress made in the adoption of the terms of reference of the UN Framework Convention on Tax Cooperation. We should deepen this initiative and work towards a UN Framework Convention on Tax Cooperation. Similarly, we must ensure that any reform of the international financial system includes comprehensive debt relief measures to enable sustainable financing for development. Countries of the Global South cannot make meaningful economic progress without special concessions and a review of their current debt burden. The present administration pays due regard to the imperatives of creating a conducive national environment for investment and the ease of doing business. Last year, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu signed four executive orders to curb double taxation. The government also established the presidential task force on review of fiscal policy and tax reform. These measures are geared towards not only boosting investor confidence in Nigeria, but also to ensure investors make reasonable profit from their investments. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, while the world is transitioning into the fourth industrial revolution, Africa remains energy deficient. The push for the accelerated implementation of SDG 7, affordable and clean energy, therefore, must take into account Africa's precarious situation. Nigeria believes that natural gas remains central to the search for solutions to the energy challenges that Africa and the international community face. Access to affordable, reliable, cleaner sources of energy is more than an environmental or developmental issue. It is a key factor in social peace and international security. Mr. President, Nigeria remains unwavering in its commitment to SDG 13, climate action, including the net zero ambition and transition from fossil fuel energy to clean energy. As a demonstration of this commitment, the government established the Presidential Committee on Climate Action and Green Economy Solutions and appointed a special presidential envoy on climate action. We will redouble our efforts to address the challenges posed by climate change, including the urgent need to transition from fossil fuel energy. Yet, such commitments must be juxtaposed with the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and the relevant provisions of the Paris Climate Agreement back in 2015. The Paris Agreement provided for developed countries to take the lead in the quest to achieve net zero and to offer support, including finance, to developing countries for the actualization of the climate change goal. Worthy of note is the loss and damage funding for vulnerable countries secured at COP27 in Egypt and expanded in COP28 in the United Arab Emirates. It is our expectation, it is our expectation that this year's 79th session of the UN General Assembly and the upcoming COP29 in Azerbaijan this November will go a step further by providing developing countries, especially African countries, with access to the loss and damage funds, including the $100 billion pledged by developed countries to mitigate the negative impacts of climate change. Mr. President, in this age of digital innovation, we must address the emerging divide between the global south and the global north, which, with the evolution of artificial intelligence, risks becoming wider still. 
the UN should work towards eliminating barriers to digital economy in Africa, such as high cost of internet services and intellectual property rights. More so, there is a need to work towards common goal global standards to regulate cryptocurrency trading platforms. This is the most effective way to provide confidence in these markets and limit the potential for instability. Our own experience in Nigeria, as in other countries, shows that new technologies, when not properly regulated, can facilitate organized crime, violent extremism, and human trafficking. In our own case, the trading of cryptocurrency helped fuel speculation and undermine macroeconomic reforms. Separately, we have also witnessed in rich and poor countries alike the coercive impact of unfiltered hate speech and fake news across social media. There is much more that we could and should do together to strengthen those guardrails that will help release the most progressive elements of the new technologies shaping our world and curb those more destructive tendencies. Mr. President, we are particularly mindful of the imperatives of achieving the ad advancement of youth and women as a factor in national development, peace, and security. Nigeria has developed its own national action plan on women and security, as well as a national action plan on youth, peace, and security to ensure the participation of both women and youth in the peace and security sector. The summit of the future cannot be deemed successful without setting clear, ambitious, and achievable developmental goals to address the various challenges facing our youth. In line with this aspiration, the Nigerian government will continue to invest in Nigerian youth through initiatives like the revitalization of the National Youth Investment Fund for 2024 